How is everyone doing? When studying chemistry, there's a few reaction trends that we see time and time again. For example, acids and bases. You're going to be studying acids and bases for the rest of your time in chemistry. Another really important reaction like that is nucleophilic substitution. We're going to learn it today in an organic chemistry, and you're going to see it in biology and biochemistry. Just look at here. This is a nucleophilic substitution reaction that happens in this enzyme. And throughout this video, we're going to talk about the two types, SN1 and SN2. Remember in the beginning when we introduced the idea of high electron density molecules or ions, and that's nucleophilic? And we have electrophilic atoms, which are low electron density, usually because they're connected to a very electronegative element or something that's pulling its electron density off it. Moving forward, we're going to see more and more how these nucleophiles can either be charged or they can be neutral molecules. Since there's such a wide range of different molecules and ions that can act as nucleophiles, we judge them based off their ability to use that excess of electron density to react. We call this their nucleophilicity. For example, let's compare water with hydrogen sulfide. So the idea of why hydrogen sulfide is a better nucleophile is because sulfur has a larger atomic radius. This means that it's more willing to share some electrons versus oxygen with a smaller atomic size. We have the valence shell closer to the nucleus, so we have more interactions and pull towards those electrons, which isn't going to make water as willing to share those electrons. So this is just one aspect of us comparing two different nucleophiles. Throughout our process of studying nucleophilic substitution and elimination reactions, we're going to constantly be comparing nucleophiles and leaving groups. A leaving group in our reactions is the component that's being substituted. So throughout SN1 and SN2, these are nucleophilic substitution reactions. So essentially what we're doing is that we're swapping one nucleophile for another. The very first reaction that we're going to look at is SN1, unimolecular substitution. This pathway is really governed by the fact that the leaving group leaves first. So in this case, the iodine is going to leave first, and it's usually because of interactions with the solvent. We're going to talk about solvent and other factors that go into these reactions later on. Through the iodine leaving, it's going to take that shared electron with it, and this is going to create a carbocation. Because we have a carbocation intermediate, that means that SN1 pathways are governed by stability of carbocations. And because of this, like we've seen before, stability of carbocations increases the more substituted they are. So we have methyl as the least stable, and then we gradually increase with primary, secondary, and tertiary. Because of this, SN1 reactions are limited through only reacting in cases where a tertiary or a secondary carbocation can form. Now that we know that SN1 reactions favor formation of tertiary or secondary carbocations, let's continue with our reaction. The iodine leaves the molecule, taking the shared electron with it, creating a secondary carbocation. Then our bromine ion, to finish the reaction, attacks the carbocation, creating our new molecule, 2-bromopropane. Now that's usually the last step if the nucleophile is charged. If the nucleophile is neutral, then we will have a follow-up reaction where we deprotonate the nucleophile that attacked, creating the neutral molecule. Now that we've done the reaction once, let's look over some summary stuff. The intermediate form throughout SN1 reactions is a carbocation. They favor polar protic solvents because it will help stabilize the intermediate, which is the carbocation, through the acidic hydrogen. It favors formation of tertiary and secondary carbocations, and the regioselectivity is racemic, even though we have a slight, slight favoring for inversion. It's a two-step pathway, but the kinetics is only dependent on the leaving group leaving. So that's why we call it the rate determining step. Since this reaction is so dependent on the leaving group leaving, one of the most beneficial things of this reaction, besides the fact of 
desiring a tertiary or secondary carbocation formation is having a really good leaving group. Iodine here is a really good leaving group because of its atomic size, it can handle its negative charge. Looking at the second reaction we're going to look at throughout our video, the SN2 reaction, bimolecular substitution. One way to think about it is that it's almost the opposite of what we looked at with SN1. In this case, it's a one-step reaction where the incoming attacking nucleophile essentially forces the leaving group to leave. Where before we had a carbocation formation, here we don't have an intermediate, we have a transition state. And so because of that, we're not going to be governed by the stability of carbocations. In this case, it's kind of flipped. We don't want a substituted carbon. The more substituted the carbon is, the harder it is for the nucleophile to attack the electrophilic carbon because of steric hindrance. So because of this, SN2 reactions favor unsubstituted carbons such as methyl and primary and sometimes secondary, but definitely not tertiary. The reaction rate of SN2 reactions are dependent on both of the electrophile and the nucleophile, versus SN1 was just dependent on the electrophile because that's where the leaving group left. SN2 reactions favor polar aprotic solvents without an acidic hydrogen. Because if we had polar protic solvents, then that would affect our nucleophile because it's going to have interactions with the solvent, which is going to affect our rate now that our rate constant includes the nucleophile. When it comes to regioselectivity for SN2 reactions, we got to remember with SN1 we had a carbocation formation, with SN2 we don't. Because a nucleophile attacks from the opposite side that the leaving group leaves, our product is always going to have inverted stereochemistry. At this video, we did a really good job at introducing the topics of SN1 and SN2. And I know we didn't go in super detail, but don't worry. The next few videos about organic chemistry are just going to focus on SN1, SN2, and new reactions such as E1 and E2. We're also going to do a few videos comparing when to do nucleophilic substitution and when to do elimination. I'm actually also thinking about doing a few videos where we just do deep dives on some problems of nucleophilic substitution and elimination. I hope this video was helpful at introducing these topics to you guys. And in the following videos, we're going to talk more about them. So I hope you guys have a great day. And remember, all the infographics that I use throughout this video are for free download on my website. You could just search up doodlesinthemembrane.com or the link is in the description. Hope it helps.